Good morning, Wonder Watson. I'm Carolyn, and welcome to Eagle Watch News. Today's date is Wednesday, February 1st, 2012, and it's an orange day. Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful day outside right now. But this week is National Severe Weather Awareness Week. But more on that after we check in for today's lunch. Today's lunch is chicken patty sandwich, potato wedges, baked beans, and juice. This week's salad is chicken oriental, and today's sandwich is yogurt, muffin, and cheese stick. It's National Severe Weather Awareness Week. Look outside on any given day, and what you see might be very different than what you saw just the day before. Yesterday may have been cloudy, today's sunny, and tomorrow, well, you just might want to stay inside. People think Florida is always warm and sunny. But we do have hurricanes, tornadoes, and we are the lightning capital of the world. But who keeps us informed of these sudden changes of weather? Well, meteorologists, of course. They study the atmosphere and the weather. Fifth grade has just completed a science unit on weather, so they were treated to a visit from a real live meteorologist, Mr. Brian McClure from Bay News 9. Mr. McClure talked about some of the instruments meteorologists use to predict weather, both from the past and present. He spoke about severe weather like tornadoes and the unpredictability of thunderstorms and lightning. After he spoke to the fifth graders, I had the opportunity to sit and ask a few questions about his job as a meteorologist. Good morning, Mr. McClure, and thank you for talking with us today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Um, can you, t can you tell us a bit how, when and how you got interested in meteorology? Let's see. I got interested in meteorology when I was in high school. And it was one of those things where it wasn't anything specific that I wanted to do. It was a guidance counselor that asked me what hobbies I had. And I said, well, I like the we weather. I just like watching the weather and I like trying to forecast it. And so that was when I decided, well, I'll go ahead and try and go to college and get a degree in it. So it was really that simple. Some people, it's a big weather event, and I grew up with big weather events, but it wasn't anything specific. It was just one of those things where I had a general liking to it. That's it. I understand you need to go to college before you become a weatherman. Uh, what things did you study? Usually what you study to become a meteorologist these days, and by the way, it's a lot different than it used to be. 20 to 30 years ago, you didn't have to do this to go on TV, but now it's generally a good idea because there aren't too many people that aren't hired on TV without being a meteorologist. To do that, you need to get your certification. You usually have to take a lot of physics, chemistry, calculus, math type classes. So you, in other words, you generally need to be good with math and science. You have to understand how the atmosphere works, and it's usually broken down with math and science. So those are the main things. So in other words, if someone ever is interested in weather, I usually tell them that when they get to high school, do a lot of math and science to prepare for college. What types of weather are more stressful f for your job and dangerous to the public? The most stressful for me are tornado situations because they are chaotic and there usually is not much lead time to forecast them. In other words, you usually have to warn people within a few minutes. And that's very hard to do because not everybody is by a TV, not everybody's by a radio. So it's very hard to get the warning out there. And plus, the reason they're the most stressful for me personally is because I always think about the people. I always think about what if my wife or my kids were in a situation where a tornado was coming. So it's very hard for me to forecast tornadoes when I know the damage that they can do. Hurricanes are destructive and they stress me sometimes but usually we can warn you days, if not weeks in advance. So they're not as stressful. Our fifth graders had the opportunity to do a weather forecast. Check this out. Air pressure is high, which makes the weather warm. Temperature in Lakeland is 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is 49%. The temperature and humidity will make it feel warmer and the air pressure is 1036. The temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit and 23 degrees Celsius. Good job, fifth graders. I think we have some budding meteorologists on our hands. 
Well, Watson's off on another trip. When he found out that it was National Severe Weather Awareness Week, he picked just the right place. Let's find out where that is. Today, Watson is traveling to Antarctica. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. It is also the coldest, driest, and windiest continent in the world. The South Pole is in Antarctica. Because Antarctica is located at the bottom of the Earth, every direction from the South Pole is north. Antarctica's official population is zero, but scientists from many different countries live in more than 40 year-round research stations. Travel to Antarctica during winter is extremely difficult due to the cold and darkness. So why would Watson choose February to travel to Antarctica? Because the seasons in the southern hemisphere are the opposite of ours. Right now, while we are having winter, Antarctica is having summer. Last night was Family Team Spirit Night. It was a great success. Family has really got into the spirit of things by dressing up, and they really enjoyed those learning activities and the pizza. Well, a few quick reminders. Remember to pre-order those yearbooks, and of course, keep collecting those box tops. Well, that's all I have for today. Bye.